Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Intuitive Angling. Hope everybody's having a good day out there today and uh, appreciate you guys taking some time to watch the video. Today, I'm gonna show you guys the, the, the best way, in my opinion, to rig a fluke as far as to not miss the fish, to get the best action out of it, and just to, to get more bites overall. You guys, I don't want you to learn how to rig it like this. I don't think that you're gonna go back to the traditional way. So I'm gonna show you this trick I developed years ago with you guys, and I talk about how to set it up. It's sort of a, uh, it's not, it's not hard to do, but it's sort of tricky until you, you know, practice it a few times. But once I go through it, you'll be able to, to get it pretty easy. So anyway, before we get started, just want to remind you guys, if you get a chance, go by and check out fishthemoment.com or Lake Map Breakdowns. Myself, uh, Johnny Schultz, and Matt Steffen, we're all building Lake Map Breakdowns for lakes all across the country spring, summer, winter, fall, um, all your favorite lakes. If you got lakes that aren't on the list, we can do a personal breakdown. It's an awesome way to learn more about the lakes you fish a lot, and learn a bunch of new spots. Um, if you don't know much about a lake, it's one of the best ways that you can learn about it without even being there. So check them out, fishingamoment.com. I'll include the link in the description. Okay guys, let's talk about the fluke deal. Um, Fluke's been around a long time. Guys, this is one of the most fish catching baits that there is in the springtime of the year. Not just the springtime, but all, all year long. I mean, this is just a, a it's a minnow resembling thing. It's it's just stood the test of time. It's quiet, um, just catches a lot of fish and a lot of quality fish. The thing about a fluke though, it's um it's a it's a it's a finicky bait as far as rigging the thing because you have got to rig the thing right to get the proper action out of it. If you don't rig this bait right, it tends to pop out of the water. It won't have the darting action side to side like it needs to have. Um, so there's ways that to rig this thing that this is definitely gonna help you out. First of all, most people, I'm pulling out here, most people when they rig a fluke, um, they think in terms of using an EWG, and I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna show you how, guys how most people rig a fluke, that it's not the way you wanna rig it. They just take an EWG hook, they come through the slit in the belly, you know, it's got, it's got this slit in the belly, uh, they come through that, and out the top like that. This is how most of the people rig a fluke. And this is okay, but guys, you're gonna miss a ton of fish like this. The way this is set up, and dealing with this plastic here, you're just gonna miss a lot of fish. And also, when it's rigged like this, the bait tends to hop out of the water. So this, your, your basically your strike to land ratio is about 50% on this bait. Terrible way to rig a fluke. So I'm gonna show you guys what you need to do on this. First of all, let's talk about the setup. I mean, you use this thing, no, normally I like 15 pound tests, Seaguar and Vizx fluorocarbon. The first thing I do is I tie, I get a barrel swivel on there just a regular barrel swivel. The reason you want the barrel swivel on there is a fluke, is a line twisting son of a gun after you fish it for a while. And you get, if by putting this uh, barrel swivel on there, it'll keep your, it'll keep, not only it'll keep your line from twisting, but it adds just a bit, just a little bit of weight to help get that bait down where it doesn't want to pop out of the water. So a barrel swivel is key. And normally I'll use it like on a, you know, eight to 12 inch leader. The next thing you wanna do is take a straight shank, three-aught hook. This is the Gamagatsu G Finesse um, heavy cover, uh, not the flipping hook, but just the heavy cover worm hook. Straight shank like that, three-aught. You don't wanna use anything bigger than the three-aught. Now this is the critical part, guys. What you wanna do is you wanna thread this hook on completely through the bait where it comes out underneath. And I'm gonna show you why you do that. But what you have, this is the tricky part. Cause see this, this uh, uh, how it's folded up there. You've got like an eighth of an inch uh, hard part on the top, and that's what you, that, that's what you have to stay in as you're threading this. So what you want to do is you want to come through with the hook point is going to go down like this. So you come in at this angle, and then just take your time, and you're going to slowly thread this thing all the way down through the bait. And the thing about that is you have to stay within an eighth, in, eighth inch of the top or you're gonna get into this hollow portion here. So take your time and go real slow all the way down it. And uh, this, is, this is the most critical part of the thing. 
I normally go down about halfway down the bait. Okay, so I've got it about like that. So what I want to do now is I want to come out on the slit right here. So I'm going to open it up a little bit. I'm going to look in there and make sure my hook point is starting to come out the middle of the slit. So I've got it's coming out like that. And at this point, I'm going to slowly thread it back on where it's upside down. Like this. So this is the way you want it, guys. Right here, do you, you see this? Let me get a little bit straighter here. It's not quite crooked enough. Sometimes you have to do this. Sometimes when you get right down there to that end of it, sometimes it, uh, if you don't get it just completely perfect, it'll, it won't be uh, straight on you. So sometimes you have to go back th down there through it with it. But what you want to do is you want to make it, see how this thing is crooked down a little bit? It doesn't, the, where the end, well, it straights like that, but what you want to do is you want to make it where there's a crook in it, where the thing is sitting sideways like that. And by doing this, by not pulling it all the way straight, if I see if I pull it all the way straight, it gets flat like that. You don't want this because if you pull it completely flat like that, it's going to dart out of the water. So what you want to do is make sure you got the crook in it where, you, where your tail is pointing down. And by having that tail pointed down, it will make that bait dart under the water. But this is the way it looks. See, what you have here is you got the exposed single hook underneath it. And guys, most of the time when a fish hits a fluke, they're coming up from the bottom to get it. They got that exposed hook right there. You never miss them. And this is surprisingly weedless. I mean, unless you throw this thing in the middle of a brush pile, you can work this thing anywhere where they bite a fluke, you know, just down open banks or on docks around the outside edges of cover. Most of the time with the fluke, you're working it around the outside edge of some type of cover. So you don't really need it to be weedless. Now, if you, if you need it to be weedless and you just simply can't get away with an exposed hook, then you have no option than, uh, than rigging it. Like I told you before, like with the offset hook, but guys, 95% of the time I can get away with fishing the fluke like this. And another thing about like this, when you rig it like this, it has got the most crazy darting action that you've ever seen. It's like when it darts, it tends to dart down a little bit instead of like wanting to hop out of the water. So guys, this is the way to rig it right here. Straight shank hook, rig the thing upside down like that. Make sure that your tail is pointing down a little bit like that. And you will get more bites you will land more of the bites that you get and it's just it's absolutely the best way to fish it this is this came to me through just frustration i i spent so many years like getting strikes and losing fish on fluke and they bite the tail of it and i couldn't get them in it but once i started using it like this it just completely changed the, the, the entire game now another thing you can do if you're fishing open water like for schooling fish sometimes I'll take like a small treble hook, like a number five or something, and I'll thread that number five treble hook underneath on the bottom, and I'll put like a little milk piece of plastic milk jug, uh, cut a little piece out, put it on there to keep it. And sometimes that little piece of, uh, just a little treble hook back there, if I'm fishing open water for schooling fish, you can get them on that too. So give it a try guys, barrel swivel, eight to 12 inch leader, straight shank Gamagatsu G Finesse three yacht. And uh, it'll definitely make your fluke fishing a lot more highly, a lot more productive um, than you've ever seen it before. So, again, guys, thanks for tuning into the video. Much appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't, and we'll talk later.